Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and this is Video Response 10 to Step 1 Survival's Bug Out Bag Inch Bag Challenge. The subject of today's video is Communications Electronics. What you see before you is my entire complement of communications assets and battery charging options for my bug out bag. Starting at the top, we have my battery bank, which is also a solar panel. This is not Shaka Cola, this is actually a antenna for my bug out bag radio. I have an extra pair of glasses and this is my charging equipment and of course a smartphone. This is my power film lightsaber and what this is is a 3500 milliamp hour rechargeable battery pack like a battery bank and You can see here it stretches out and has typical power film solar panel. You can charge it here and your LED indicator shows you your state of charge and then on this side is your output. Weight of the power film lightsaber is 5 ounces. It has a 1 amp USB output and it, in full sunlight you can charge it up in a day. Uh, in moderate light or uh, tree cover, it usually takes 12 to 14 hours in my experience. And I have a video where I reviewed this on my channel if you're interested. Now in this small stuff sack at a weight of 4.5 ounces, I have the balance of my charging equipment here. This is just a, a, a 2 amp output USB charger and a USB charging cable. This right here is a 12 volt to USB and what I do is I just put test clips on this and this is a little $3 3 amp USB board right here and I just covered it in heat shrink. Using this I can recharge my USB chargeable items with a standard 12 volt battery uh, like a piece of lawn equipment, a uh, gel cell like from an alarm cabinet or a UPS or a standard automotive battery, a tractor battery, whatever have you this gives me the flexibility to charge that instead of having something on a cigarette lighter which would necessitate having an automotive cigarette lighter or DC jack this is just an 18650 charger right here, and this one is extremely light in weight, and that's the reason why I selected it. The My standard headlamp that I use in my main light is just this through night TH10, which uses an 18650, and doesn't have its own charger built into it. That being the case, what you would do is, is you would charge it with this. Now, you can see when you plug it in, it gives you some feedback to let you know that there's a state of charge on it and with this device here you can recharge it off of this right here or let's say I wanted to sacrifice this battery to charge this device I would merely unplug this place it on the output side of this and then plug it on the input of this right here and it allows me to discharge this battery to charge this battery and you can do the same thing with your cellular telephone charging this right here now let's say I needed to charge something off of a alarm panel battery or this is just a little 7 amp hour gel cell battery I could go to a source of 12 volts in either the panel or I could go ahead and physically remove the battery and then if I wanted to charge something I could plug it into there just like that or into my solar cell
As you can see, there's a considerable amount of interoperability engineered into my charging accessories. And now we'll discuss the radio and all the related support equipment here for the two-way radio. And the radio I've selected is the Yaesu VX3R. Is the Yaesu VX3R. Which, as you can see here, it's a very small form factor. Uh, the radio itself weighs 4.6 ounces, and that includes the battery and the antenna. And it transmits over the 2 meter and 70 centimeter range, which is via UHF, and can be expanded with a simple mod to cover just about every VHF, FM, and UHF, FM frequency. Whatever radio you select for your bug out bag or for uh, operations afield, it's important to consider the radio's ability to receive information outside of the uh, particular voice channels you have programmed into the radio. Uh, this radio has a VFO, which is nice because that gives you a lot of frequency flexibility. It's simple to operate. And it's also got an extremely broadband receiver, which is invaluable in my opinion. It uh, receives 500 kilohertz to 999 megahertz. So that's a lot of bang for the buck in such a small package and it receives an AM, FM, and wide FM. Now, being that it does wide FM, we can go ahead and pick up broadcast band audio. So, there's in your AM, AM broadcast band right there, which uses an internal bar antenna. And you also have your FM broadcast band audio right there. And this is the VX3R receiving shortwave to an HF antenna outside receiving WWV on 15 megahertz. The radio uses a VFO in direct tuning mode which is uh, to me it's a lot nicer than having direct frequency entry and it also does band sweeps. So you can see I've got it set for a 5 kilohertz step. It does a 5 kilohertz, a 10 kilohertz, a 15, uh, 12 and a half, 20, 50, 125 kilohertz steps and a 1 megahertz step, which you can see that right there. Uh, to shift between bands, you've got your VHF high band here, you've got your uh, 220 FM band, your uh, military air band, your UHF band right here. This is UHF television band here, then your 800, 900 megahertz band, and this is your HF band here and this is your six meter band and this is your civil aviation band right here so it's actually if you're using it in VFO mode it's actually very easy to move around and to find whatever channels you want to get to uh, if you hit the memory mode you can see it supports memories also which is nice and it supports alpha tags and you can program all the variables manually into the radio you don't it's not required to have the software but the software certainly makes it easier to do that and there's several different software packages out there. I use the Yaesu software, the Atom software, or, or excuse me, ADMS software, and I've been I've been pretty happy with it. It's a it's a pretty good program, and it's actually very simple to work with, especially if you're used to working with some of the commercial programs. Okay, transmitter specifications are uh, it puts out at high power one and a half watts on VHF and one watt at UHF. The uh, low power mode puts it down to 100 milliwatts, which is actually plenty of power if you're within a quarter mile of each other, and prolongs your battery life using that. Uh, deviation, it does 25 kilohertz and 12 and a half kilohertz channels, so if someone you know happens to run a narrow band repeater, uh, you're good to go. On the radio right now, I just have this uh, VHF quarter wave, which is a dual band antenna right here, which is nice and flexible, so it fits into the container. Uh, you can see this right here is just a counterpoise, which you would put your counterpoise on under here, which is just a ring terminal and some hookup wire. And that increases your performance quite a bit. And to reduce form factor, and when I'm using UHF, I can use this antenna, which is actually a very good performer for its uh, form factor. Uh, earpiece. Uh, this is an earpiece and microphone. So I can listen silently. It has a push to talk switch right here and a microphone. So you can put the radio in your pocket and use it to transmit 
without it looking like you're using a two-way radio. This radio uses NP60 batteries, which are a standard inexpensive camera battery. And these batteries can be had for about $9 a piece. And I carry two of these batteries, and I have this little shoe charger. And the shoe charger is charged with USB. And as you can see, I can just plug it into my booster pack here, or any of my other charging solutions, and charge the battery pack. And having two batteries, I can use the radio and deplete that pack and charge this one. If you're interested in more information on the VX3R, if you look in the description box, I'm going to have the links to my channel and the videos I did on the VX3R where we go a lot more into detail on the radio itself and its capabilities. This entire system fits inside this tin can right here. And the two stuff sacks keep everything from getting scratched up inside there. And the weight of this entire system is 12 ounces. This is the radio kit configured for transport. And this tin is my bug out bag folding ground plane, which is nothing more than a small SMA connector, bulkhead connector, with quarter wavelength radials for VHF, which I had a uh, an apparatus is like spreaders to spread this apart and what I found is is that standard drinking straws slid over this right here provides more than enough support if you chose to use that which those are available or you can use small sticks and a tad of duct tape to hold those in place to give it support if so desired or if you laid it merely in a bush and spread out your radials there's a counterpoise that you would uh, also have good service and you would just use the larger whip Thread that on here. Use your small cordage right here to support this. And then another piece of cordage to hoist it up in a tree. And then you use your feed line right here, which this is just 10 foot of feed line, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're dealing with this small feeder like this, you're lost, especially at UHF. Right here you're looking at about 1.2 dB of loss at VHF in just this short section of cable. And at UHF, you're looking at maybe 2.1, 2.2 dB of loss in this 10-foot length of cable. So if you carried a 20-foot length of cable, of course, that would double your loss. Now, if you desired to have a longer feed line, you could certainly use some RG58 or some other smaller coax, but certainly not. This is RG316 here. You certainly wouldn't be able to have this compact form factor like this. Being that this is intended to be a small, portable antenna solution at 4.5 ounces, which is for everything you see here, and this is the antenna configured for transport. Just like that. Your smartphone. I talked a bit about the smartphone in uh, Video Response 9, which was the navigation video and the different navigation apps and uh, other capabilities of your smartphone. In your smartphone, you can browse the internet, you can communicate with uh, voice, text messaging, send images. Uh, you can off-grid Bluetooth with another user within close proximity with Notepad. Uh, there's so many different things you can do with your smartphone. Now, one thing to consider with your smartphone is, is it's almost everything is dependent upon a cellular network. And this being the case, Depending on your opposition, uh, it can also be a liability. Whenever you're using any kind of communications equipment, it's extremely important to have a communications plan. And what I do is this is my notebook from my navigation equipment. I have devoted a page to this to comp plan and signal instructions or whatever terminology you like to use. 
and that being the case I have a one stop reference for not only my navigation information, my notes, my communications plan and other relevant information. And last but not least a spare set of reading glasses for myself. Well I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.